This is example 3.5 on page 103 of your textbooks. And this is going to be our first example with naming. We're going to be doing several more um, together on these videos and in class. So before I start naming the compound, it's asking us to name the compound CABR2. I want to introduce you to the inorganic nomenclature flowchart. Um, while you're starting out, this flowchart is very, very helpful for helping you figure out kind of the best path for naming your chemical that you've been given. Um, so if there are basically three different ways we can name something, we can either name it as an ionic compound, a molecular compound, or an acid. An acid is technically a molecular compound, but it's a special type and they have their own system for naming. So if you recall from um, example, I believe 3.2, we practiced um, sorting different elements and compounds into their categories of either an atomic element, molecular element, ionic compound, or molecular compound. And so here is why we see that it's very important to be able to sort these things into their special categories because depending on if something is an ionic versus molecular compound, that changes how we name it. So in this example, the first thing we have to do before we can even think about naming is to figure out what type of compound CABR2 is. So hopefully you have a periodic table handy and we can recognize that CA calcium is a metal and that bromine is a nonmetal. So if we look at our flow chart for help, remember that ionic compounds are one metal plus a nonmetal. Molecular are two or more nonmetals. An acid, which we have yet to discuss, is hydrogen and another nonmetal. So based on what we just identified, we have ourselves an ionic compound. Now there are two different ways to name ionic compounds. We can either name it um, for if our metal only forms one type of ion, meaning it only can adopt one, one specific charge when it forms an ion. Um, these are gonna be the predictable charge metals that we talked about, like the alkali, alkaline earth metals. Um, or we can name it if the metal is able to form more than one type of ion. So that's going to be pretty much any of your transition metals, and we'll talk about that in a later example. So now we know calcium, that's an alkaline earth metal, it always adopts a plus two charge. So we're going to name it based on this side, this set of flowchart rules. So. For ionic compounds where the metal only has one type of charge, it's relatively easy. You name your cation, which is literally just the name of the element. So Ca is calcium. We don't have to write any um, Roman numerals after it, any charges. It's just understood calcium as an ion. We name it calcium, um, Ca2+. So then for our nonmetal, it's the name of the anion, kind of its, its base name, and then we chop off its ending and put IDE. So as an element, Br is bromine. Its kind of base for that is this BROM, and we technically chop off that I-N-E ending and replace it with ide. So when bromine is an ion, it, is, it exists as bromide. So therefore, its um, name in this case would be bromide. So the way to name this compound, CABR2, is calcium, name of our metal cation and then bromide, replacing that I-N-E with an I-D-E ending. Um, it's like 
Think of it as the ion is the bride, and since technically the bride changes her name when she gets married, it's like replacing the last name with the ID ending. So there you have it, final answer, calcium bromide.